Hey everybody, I'm Joey, and today I'll show you how to make filet mignon, one of the most tender meats in the world, even more tender. So follow me, and let's turn up the tasty. <laughs> today we're cooking beef tenderloin, which as the name implies, is a very tender cut of meat, which we've broke down into filet mignons. We've showed you how to do that in another video, but today we're going to make these even more tender which is hard to believe by using the sous vide machine from our friends over at Kitchen Boss. Sous vide is usually made to make tough meats very tender, which begs the question, why would you sous vide one of the most tender steaks available? And that's a great question. Let's just say you're having a big holiday get together, a party with a bunch of people, and you wanna serve up some great tasting steaks. But here's the issue. Uncle Johnny wants a steak rare, and Granny wants her steak, God forbid, well done. Okay, this allows you the flexibility to get all your temperatures 100% correct without slaving over a 600 degree grill, without worrying if you're gonna destroy an entire $100 plus full beef tenderloin. Maybe you don't even have a grill big enough to fit that tenderloin and this solves that problem. The first thing we need to do is get the water hot. And this sous vide machine makes it very simple. The neat thing about this Kitchen Boss is it actually comes with preset temperature settings. If you wanna cook a steak, it's already set, and you can adjust it to meet your own personal preferences. You can also set the time. This is set for one hour, but if we wanna do something different, it comes with this handy knob, and we can adjust accordingly. I'm gonna go ahead and cook these steaks at 130 degrees Fahrenheit for one hour. One of the biggest pains for me anytime I sous vide is how did I cook it last time? I mean, there's different temperatures for steak, for chicken, for pork, and the neat thing about this machine is it keeps all those presets right in there. Speaking of preferences, the first thing we really need to do is get these steaks seasoned right here. I'm using a little Big Tasty Steak Rub, free rub, available on our website that I've kicked up with just a little bit of ancho and chipotle peppers. So we're gonna go ahead and get that sprinkled on all sides of the steaks. And don't be afraid to over season. A lot of these seasonings are gonna get lost as we cook. Okay, now that we have the steak seasoned, the next thing we need to do is get them in some bags. But I like to use vacuum sealed bags to make sure they're airtight and no water gets in. So what we're going to use for that is our Kitchen Boss food sealer. We get the steak in the bag with a couple of these fresh aromatics. I have some sage and some thyme to go in there to help kick up that flavor a little bit. All right, so we have the steaks in the bags. Now I do have another industry known vacuum sealer, but I really am digging this Kitchen Boss because there's nothing worse than vacuum sealing food, thinking you're putting it in the freezer so it can be well preserved, and then you come down there a month later and you find out that the seal didn't hold, that the suck wasn't strong enough. You won't have those problems with this Kitchen Boss machine. It will not suck the proverbial chrome off of a hitch, but it gets the job done we need it for right here. All joking aside, it comes with a couple easy buttons to use. We have a dry vac option, which we're gonna use right now. That's gonna create the tightest air seal of all, but it also comes with a moist, some people don't like that word, a moist vacuum option in case you're trying to preserve like a soup or some other liquid where using that dry vac, all that suction's gonna pull the liquid out of there. But it comes with another really neat feature that my other machine simply doesn't have called this inching feature. And what it does is it allows you to really be precise with how much of a vacuum you're creating in that bag. Right there. And that's a really unique feature of this. We're gonna hit that dry vac button. It knows when to stop the vacuum. It automatically seals it. I hit this button, open it up, and we have a steel, steeled? No, a sealed steak. We can throw this in the freezer for when we're ready to cook, or in this case, we're just gonna go ahead and drop it in as soon as I get the other one done. All right, our temperature is preheated to 130 degrees. Let's go ahead and drop these in the water now. And I like to clip them to the side. Now I'm using a cooler here because it's an excellent vessel to retain the heat. They also make sous vide specialty buckets that you can buy, but I have found that this little cooler does the trick perfectly. 
Now this is gonna take about an hour to cook, so I'm gonna grab a drink and I'll be right back. These steaks are cooked, but they really don't look very pretty because there is no Maillard reaction. That's the browning effect that happens when the heat meets the meat. So we're gonna go ahead and create that action. I've got this cast iron skillet getting nice and hot, but we need to do one thing, and that is get rid of all the moisture on the surface of these steaks. So while we're patting this out, we're gonna lose some of that seasoning. So we're also gonna to need to reapply our seasoning here as well. So we just wanna get that nice and dry. All right, let's get the temperature of this pan. This is coming in right at about 450 degrees. I really wanna get this as hot as possible. Somewhere around 550 to 600 degrees will help get that nice sear. Remember, these are already cooked to perfection, so we're really just getting a sear on both sides about 30 to 45 seconds. Okay, this is at about 600 degrees. We're gonna go ahead and add just a little bit of oil, and now we drop the steaks. You press it in, you wanna get a nice press on that so it makes full contact. The aromatics on this thing are absolutely incredible. It smells tremendous. And can you hear that at home? Can you? <laughs> I forgot what happens when you cook chipotle or any real hot peppers over high heat. One neat thing about the sous vide method is you don't need to let your steaks rest once they're done cooking. You won't lose all the juices like you would in a traditional sear situation. So let's see how they look. Awesome color, love that. I can already tell you just from feel alone, these are incredibly tender. But the other thing we've been able to do is not be stuck to the stove while these things cook. One of the advantages of cooking with the sous vide machine is that it gets full edge to edge doneness. Typically, when you grill or you pan fry a steak, you're inherently going to get the exterior of the steak, the quarter inch running around, the full exterior, that will be like well done. And you'll need to get that in order to get to a perfect medium rare or rare center. So that's another great advantage of using this method. I don't even think I need a knife. Look, I can just literally pull that apart. Oh man, that is perfection. It is heaven, not only is it super soft, but it's super easy. And this ancho and these chipotle peppers, give it a nice little kick, something that I really like. How do you guys like your steaks? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, don't take my word for this. I encourage you guys at all to try this for yourself. And if you do, let us know how it turns out. I'm gonna get back to my steaks and I'll see you guys soon.